we are very glad to, uh, to have seen your performance and uh, we are very glad to speak with you uh, and uh, we could see all of the film we have uh, or we could see the performance live in Gidai in front of the Golf Golf and I will have the big joy to speak now with Viktor Janski who is a uh, maker and a uh, dance performer. So, um, Lee, his performance will have uh, lots of different kind of levels and uh, to large audience. And it has a very special uh, shape, it's really particular as a piece. And I, was, I wish to know from which kind of references, questions, elements he went from. I think now looking back at the process, it's only now that I can create a kind of story. Yes. But being in the process at the time, uh, I couldn't really say how the things came together. Mm -hmm. I know that I know that for um, for the beginning I was really interested in effort. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I felt I was in in some kind of period. Uh, of my life when I felt like we are um, not able to get rid of effort. Like it's something that makes us alive and it's something that makes us still move mm -hmm. towards something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the first six months when I was alone in the studio, I was just working around this topic, effort. And, and at some point I was I went to galleries and I and I started to think that there might be some connection to uh, to baroque, mm -hmm. uh, and and so I, I looked at the internet and I and I found a book from Judas called Ply, mm -hmm. where Judas writes about baroque from the point of view of Gottfried von mm -hmm. and he. He uses ply as a core term to describe the philosophy of that time. And I liked it very much because I was also next to the effort. Yes. I was interested in making peace where there would be no clear lines, no, no straightforwardness, no... Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah, where everything could be bent or curved. I think that came from the previous performance by mm -hmm. Ola because there I worked with the lines, which were like narrow, mm -hmm. and I had mm, this idea that maybe I would like to see if it's possible to work with something that is bent. Mm -hmm. So it somehow started to come together the effort, the rhythms, the Why was I interested yes, in the secret? Yes, yes. It just was there, the interest is there. I don't know how the interest comes yes. into mind. Mm -hmm. But it came to my mind, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I felt mm, trapped in, in something that is, that is so, mm, straight. Yes. And, mm. and the curve for me, it represented some movement or dynamic, something that you cannot really predict, you cannot say where the end is, mm -hmm. like you cannot see behind the corner of something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting because very, very often, uh, at the first slight, you see something which is uh, abstract when you speak about curve, it's abstract. But that's actually is to reach what you're speaking about. Mm -hmm. So this journey, this uh, way not to be trapped, uh, to, to see the possibilities occurring, and that, that's your way of what speaking about the curves in this performance. Mm -hmm. And where do you see, where are those curves, for example, are appearing in the piece? How did you use this curve aspect? Yeah, it's at one moment it was important for me to have 
something that is really clear and this is the platform on which I perform and this is really a, a street space with street borders yes. and only in this strict uh, platform you can see all the curves and everything that's bent and uh, maybe I just come a few steps uh, before yes. and this is the chairs because I work with the chairs <laughs> obviously <laughs>
very special. And perhaps linked to what you said just right now. Yeah, well, yeah, the, the question of time is, I think it's important when thinking about the medium. And this is for me now, it's a big question. Why do we do some kind of work as a dance piece? Why do we present some kind of work in the gallery? And how, how it is a different meeting with the public who comes for an exact amount of time, they come at 7 p.m. to see your performance and then they know that there is some kind of start. So for me, having these questions, I was maybe interested in giving the spectator the, I don't know if freedom, but not so much a strict beginning and a strict end. Mm -hmm. And so maybe from there came the, the decision to already be on stage, to already be occupied with what I do and that the audience is maybe just visiting mm -hmm. for some time and that they see a time frame and after 40 minutes I leave but still there's something present. Um, like the painting. Like the painting, maybe, yeah. <laughs> It's really interesting how different audiences react to these conditions because I remember a few performances where I would leave and wait 10 more minutes until people start to clap, for instance, that they need a different time to process or to decide where the end is together. This is very interesting. Yeah. And also about the rhythm. Um, I'm kind of stubborn in the rhythm and then with the part where there's silence I realize that there is something about um, absence that over time of insisting on something and taking it away it still lives through the absence not anymore in the space maybe but more in our perception as spectators and what's more, after you leave, we are now always in this. It's not now to leave in here, it's also in the body. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, yeah, a very interesting uh, question about the traces of a, of a love piece. As it is uh, a painting or a, a performance, but there's something in the memory which is really engraved. And after this, we. <laughs> and you had a very practical process to you. you work a long time on this piece mm -hmm. to arrive to this incredible simplicity. You had really to focus on, uh, yes, to, to, to make a lot of uh, artistic cho choices. And one of your uh, process choices was to have very regular audience to speak with. Yes. So for work in progress. Yes. yes. What that this brought you to the process? Mm -hmm. So may I would maybe divide this question in two parts for me. Yes. And one of them is that um, we spoke about the references or the inspirations or the beginnings of the process. And I realized that uh, during this process, plea especially, um, I realized how much I need to rely on seeing the reality of the stage. Uh, that would mean that I would have a lot of ideas working on the piece in my head, mm -hmm. being home or walking in the street, and then I just had to put all these images that I had uh, in the studio mm -hmm. and to see that they don't work. Mm -hmm. uh, and to give up to this, to accept the reality that the stage is different world than my mind and that what I pre-conceptualize would actually never or very rarely work and what I need to look for is where it really starts to somehow work like for instance in the beginning I wouldn't say that there would be 22 chairs in the piece <laughs> And 
then, <laughs> and then, yeah, it's true that I try to have as many works in Pergesis as possible. And that is, I think, related to two things also. One of them is uh, that I don't really think that our position as artists is the one of a hidden elite that hides in the studio for two months and then just comes with a prepared piece uh, oh no. <laughs> farce, yeah, and, and relying just on the premiere and being um, interested in how it goes after the premiere. Yeah. So for me it was more about also uh, being open to the public and then bringing my questions to them. Mm -hmm. Like I would need a lot of feedback also because maybe it was a, a solo work but also because I I, I needed a lot of information, so I would, if it was possible, I would make a work in progress and then I would have a prepared uh, questions, open questions for public so they can enter into the world with their own mm -hmm. words and imagination. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was maybe more than 300 people who, with their feedbacks, participated in the piece. Mm -hmm. But thanks to uh, the reaction of 300 people, you made a lot of artistic decisions. I would say so. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can tell that as an audience, uh, your fantasy can really go with you. And for me, it's one of the things I love <laughs> in your performances. Uh, and uh, it's not that I didn't see this just play just once, but several times. And each time I see things which are different. It's not related to you, it's related to the, to the piece itself. Mm -hmm. And beautiful thing in the piece is when the piece reads you and not when you are reading the piece. And it's what's happening with me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank much. you. <laughs> and I hope that we'll have again.